Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the battering ram of the dinosaurs. Thank you once again to Anthony Bush 4407 for suggesting the hard-headed Pachycephalosaurus. The story of Pachycephalosaurus is quite muddled, so we'll be jumping around a bit in this explanation. The earliest remains of Pachycephalosaurus were first discovered in 1860 by fossil collector Ferdinand Vandeveer Hayden near the head of the Missouri River as part of the Lance Formation in the modern-day United States, specifically the state of Montana. However, this is not where the genus originated. These remains, which consisted of bone fragments from the skull, were assigned to an undescribed animal named the Tylosteus. Fast forward to 1931, when paleontologist Charles Gilmore names the type species for Pachycephalosaurus based off of fossils from Lance Creek, located in the state of Wyoming. Its name would be Troodon wyomingensis. Wait, what? So, at this point in time, the theropod carnivore Troodon is only known from collected teeth fossils, and these teeth have a strong resemblance to Pachycephalosaurus family members like the Stegoceras. So, Pachycephalosaurus relatives were being named as members of a different family, the Troodontids. This was until 1945, when Troodon was properly described as a carnivorous theropod, rather than an herbivorous ornithischian. And most of the members of the Pachycephalosaurus family were moved to a new family. As newer, more complete specimens of Pachycephalosaurus were excavated, it would finally be named as a proper genus in 1943 by paleontologists Barnum Brown and Eric Marin Schlickier. The pair would name three unique species, which included the previously named Troodon wyomingensis, now being called Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis. However, over time, the two new species of Pachycephalosaurus would be considered synonyms of wyomingensis, bringing the total species down to one. For those keeping up with our timeline, you may wonder why Pachycephalosaurus would be chosen for the name of the genus when Tylosteus was technically named first. Well, this is because paleontologist Donald Baird successfully petitioned to have the Pachycephalosaurus name be preserved in 1985 due to a variety of factors, like the Tylosteus name not being used in almost 50 years. Thus, Pachycephalosaurus would be the more widely recognized name. As of today, there is only one widely recognized species of Pachycephalosaurus, this being the Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis. The name Pachycephalosaurus stems from the Latin words pachys for thick, kephale for head, and soros for lizard, translating to thick-headed lizard. The species name wyomingensis is in reference to the fossil that helped define the type species as it was originally found in the state of Wyoming. Pachycephalosaurus was an ornithischian, a classification of herbivorous dinosaurs named for their bird-shaped hip bones. Specifically, Pachycephalosaurus is the namesake of its own family, the Pachycephalosauridae. The Pachycephalosaurs were a family of dinosaurs that lived across North America and Asia during the late Cretaceous, between 85 to 65 million years ago. They are most easily identified for their thick, dome-shaped skulls, which were often surrounded by spikes and other ornaments. Pachycephalosaurus has some other classification confusions. It has been a hotly debated topic among scientists whether Stygimolic and Draco Rex, two other members of the Pachycephalosauridae family, were in fact not distinct family members, but instead earlier stages of life for Pachycephalosaurus. For more details on this debate, you can watch our original video on Draco Rex. But to summarize, 
There seems to be a clear growth curve between the three animals, especially between skulls. But due to a lack of complete skeletons to cross-compare among all dinosaurs, it is hard to make a definitive conclusion. Focusing once again on Pachycephalosaurus, it is possibly one of the largest members of the Pachycephalosauridae, at almost 15 feet in length and 6 feet tall. It would have weighed almost a ton, the same weight as an average American bison. It was bipedal, with long legs that could help the animal reach up to 15 miles per hour. It had a bulky body, sporting a fairly heavy tail to counterbalance its dense skull. The arms of Pachycephalosaurus were fairly short and underdeveloped, most likely not serving an important purpose for the animal. It had a short, thick neck that was shaped like an S or a U. This neck would support its most distinct feature, its beautiful skull. This skull had a small muzzle that ended in a sharp beak. Inside this beak were small, leaf-shaped teeth to grind up ferns and other leaves. While Pachycephalosaurus and other members of its family were definitely plant eaters, it has been suggested that they could have been omnivores, due to some skulls having serrated front teeth, similar to carnivorous theropods. It also had large, round eyes that faced forward, suggesting it would have excellent vision. At the top of the skull was a large, domed feature that was almost 10 inches thick. To most people, the purpose of this dome seems obvious, for headbutting, as a thick cushion between the brain and the point of contact, similar to modern day oxens or rams. However, the capability for headbutting has been a point of contention between scientists, with popular opinion often swaying over the years. The general consensus today believes that headbutting was probable among the species, for a variety of reasons. The neck being S or U-shaped is actually more ideal for headbutting than a straight neck, as it is more capable of absorbing shock and would not as easily just snap in two like a stick. The dome shape also is ideal for minimizing damage, as the circular shape would shrink the point of contact and thus result in less overall damage. Another piece of evidence is actually the existence of any damage. Paleontologist Joseph Peterson and his team conducted a study of Pachycephalosaurus skulls in 2013 and found that almost 20% of all specimens had some kind of cranial damage, a clear indication that these were not just for display, but actually served a practical use. When analyzing the composition of this dome, it was also noted that these skulls consisted of a bone that contains a unique cell type called fibroblasts. Fibroblasts is a cell type ideal for wound healing and bone deposition, which suggested that these domes were meant to be damaged and were more than capable of healing. All this evidence combined seems to indicate that these domes were more than capable of headbutting smaller carnivores and, more likely, rivals of its own species. Pachycephalosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous, almost 70 million years ago. It would have lived throughout North America, specifically U.S. states like Wyoming, North Dakota, and South Dakota. During this time, North America was split into two continents, each consisting of warm coastal environments. Pachycephalosaurus would have lived alongside herbivores like the Edmontosaurus and Triceratops, while having to contend with vicious carnivores like the Dakota Raptor and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Pachycephalosaurus is arguably the most famous member of its family, and has thus been featured in a wide range of media. It has been featured in films like 1997's The Lost World Jurassic Park, and various films in the Land Before Time series. It has also been featured in documentaries like 2018's Deadly Dinosaurs, and 2023's Prehistoric Planet 2, as well as TV shows like 2005's Dinosaur King, and 2007's Primeval, and finally video games 
like various Jurassic Park games, including the Jurassic World Evolution series, 2017's Saurian, and 2020's Path of Titans. Pachycephalosaurus has had a confused existence, from our understanding of how it lived, how it fought, and even how it existed. But regardless, what we do know is that this was a powerful and unique creature, the likes of which our world will never see again. And based off of its past, it almost certainly is still packed with new details to uncover. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Pachycephalosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Next week, we're flying back to China to learn about another feathered dinosaur, the Yu Tyrannus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.